Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day, thanks in a large part to our pals at the VFS School of Game Design. Thank you so much, Vancouver Film School. And speaking of Vancouver Film School, I'm actually traveling with VFS to Toronto, Ontario, and to London, Ontario, for a couple of events on the 11th and 12th of October. Follow me on Twitter for all of the details, but if you're in the area, I would love to see you. It would be fantastic. Uh, but this rundown is dedicated to Ballistic Z, who always has fantastic things to say about us, a major supporter. Thank you so much. This rundown is all yours. You won't have to skip class to play the new Assassin's Creed game because it may be coming to a school near you. Ubisoft has announced an all-new mode for Assassin's Creed Origins called Discovery Tour. It's a dedicated educational mode, but don't let that fool you, it actually sounds pretty cool. It's meant to teach players about ancient Egyptian history by allowing them to explore the game's vast open world, but without any of the violent combat elements or narrative constraints that you'd encounter in the regular version of the game. This way, players of all ages can explore ancient Egypt at their leisure and learn more about the various buildings and historical figures that they'll encounter. Ubisoft decided to make the mode after learning that many school teachers were using previous Assassin's Creed games to teach their students about their various historical settings, and the developers have even worked with historians and museums to include additional details to discover in the mode. Creative director Jean Guidon was excited about Discovery Tour because it shines a light on just how realistic the game world they've created really is, and it's the perfect way to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the franchise. People will really be able to enjoy the entire world with no fear of combat or conflict. Uh, we removed all the narratives and uh, we've, uh, to, re to replace that basically, we created uh, dozens of guided tours that have been created uh, by, with museums, you know, with historians to actually bring some more academic knowledge. We always put a lot of effort into recreating these worlds, you know, documenting ourselves, meeting consultants, uh, specialists, in that case, Egyptologists. And so for years, we, we, we were wondering, you know, but uh, we were wishing to do it, to do something that was actually a dedicated mode for that. I personally like a lot history and uh, was always finding that, you know, uh, the world we were recreating uh, were only seen as uh, the game background when there was so much more to actually discover uh, about that. So for the 10th anniversary, I thought that would be the perfect time you know, to come up with that uh, initiative. Assassin's Creed Origins arrives in one month. The Discovery Tour will be available as a free update in early 2018. Jean Guidon says that they're thinking about making a standalone version of this mode available to schools and teachers, but they haven't decided yet. And another open world game from Ubisoft is finally letting you take on your friends. Ghost Recon Wildlands will finally get its long-awaited PvP mode on October 10th. Known as Ghost War, it will be available simultaneously on the Xbox One, PS4, and PC, and best of all, it's available for free to anyone who already owns the game. Players have been asking for PvP ever since the game deployed earlier this year. Ghost War will give players four versus four matches and new maps set within the existing Wildlands world, with 12 different character classes falling within three distinct categories, Assault, Marksman, and Support. Like the main game and its existing co-op, you'll need to communicate with your teammates and think tactically about each match if you want to beat your opponents. I got to try out Ghost War a little early at a special event, and you can watch my first impressions video right now on our channel, but wait until we're done the rundown, okay? Apparently being forced out of the galaxy far, far away doesn't mean you can't take on a big sci-fi project in our galaxy. Directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller, just months after being fired from the Han Solo prequel movie, have found their next big project. They're set to direct a new science fiction movie called Artemis, which is based on the upcoming book of the same name from the Martian author Andy Weir. Like The Martian, Artemis tells the story of a human living in an out-of-this-world location, specifically focusing on a young smuggler inhabiting a futuristic colony on Earth's moon. The film will likely be more comedic than The Martian now that it's going to be directed by Lord and Miller. They're not the only Star Wars exiles working on the new film either. Artemis is being distributed by 20th Century Fox, the studio that started the Star Wars franchise but was forced to step aside after Lucasfilm was bought by Disney. This could really save my neck. Artemis doesn't have a release window yet, but the book will hit shelves this November. In your face, Neil Armstrong. If you're looking for a more dark science fiction movie, get a load of this. The first trailer has arrived for the new sci-fi film, Annihilation, the latest project from ex-Machina director Alex Garland. 
Based on the novel of the same name, Annihilation stars Queen Amidala herself, Natalie Portman, as a scientist who ventures into a mysterious quarantine zone on Earth where strange things have begun to happen without any explanation. She goes in to find out what happened to her husband, played by Ex Machina's Oscar Isaac, although it appears that, like other heady sci-fi tales, the deeper she looks into the zone, the deeper the zone will look into her. The movie and the book are clearly inspired by the 1979 sci-fi film Stalker, which has a very similar premise, although don't expect Annihilation to be quite as esoteric. It's also unlikely that Oscar Isaac will be tearing up the dance floor this time around. I'm gonna tear up the fucking dance floor, dude. Check it out. Annihilation will hit theaters in February. The makers of the new video game Middle Earth Shadow of War are hoping that a recent controversy shall not pass. Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment and Monolith Productions have announced that the special Fort Hog Orc Slayer DLC for the game will now be free for all players in all territories across the globe. This brings to an end weeks of controversy surrounding the DLC. When it was first announced, the publisher claimed that all proceeds from the DLC would be given to the family of the game's executive producer, Michael Forge, who sadly passed away from cancer last year. The controversy started when players discovered that apparently not all of the proceeds from the DLC would actually be able to go to the family, though. Several U.S. states and international territories have different rules regarding charitable donations that would make it impossible. Warner Brothers admits that they should have been more clear about this, and now that the DLC will be free for everyone, the studio plans to instead make a separate donation of their own directly to the family. Hopefully for them, this puts the matter to rest. Middle Earth Shadow of War will launch in two weeks, and the Fort Hog Orc Slayer content will be available to download on day one. But not today. Atari is getting back into the console business. The company has announced new details about the Atari Box, a mysterious new system that they first teased earlier this year. When it was first announced, many had assumed that it would be just another retro console that runs classic Atari games, similar to Nintendo's NES Classic and upcoming SNES Classic. It's actually a lot more than that. Although it will run old Atari games as expected, its primary focus will be running new PC games from multiple publishers, not just Atari, and it's designed to run those PC games on your TV. It kind of sounds similar to the Android-powered PC games gaming boxes from NVIDIA and Razer, although unlike those, the Atari box will run on Linux and be powered by a customized AMD processor with Radeon graphics technology. As for what other games are coming to the system, Atari says they'll announce those at a later date, and they point out that, given the open nature of Linux, players will also be able to run compatible games from other Linux platforms. Atari CEO Fred Chenet says that their goal is to create an open system that gives players and developers as much freedom as possible, but it remains to be seen how many players and developers will actually want to jump in. The Atari box is set to launch in spring 2018 with a sticker price ranging from 250 to 300 bucks US. We'll have more on the system as it develops. That's it for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about game design, visit our friends at vfs.edu. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new episode for you. But in the meantime, watch some of the other material that we've been making. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, okay?